Reminder that there's about six days left for the giveaway if you want to enter, link in the description box down below. Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to talk about Marriott's strategy moving forwards with this whole Bonvoy program and kind of some guesses I have of how they're doing. One of the big reasons we are talking about this is because earlier today, they did send out an email giving people gift cards between $30 and $50 for Marriott. So this works for their stays, it works for their property stuff, whether it's food, whether it's spa type of stuff. And it's an interesting move because I don't think we've seen something at this scale before. One interesting thing is that I ended up getting this, but Mandy didn't. And our stays, our status and stuff is pretty similar. So it might be an A-B test based off whether this helps convert people to come back if they are people they feel have left or what's going on as a whole. If you do want to see if you got this gift card, check for your gift from Marriott Bonvoy. In case you're wondering, we're going to use the gift card when we head back to Bora Bora. And if you want to see some Bora Bora stuff from last year's trip, there is some stuff on Sabi Fung, so go check that out. Also, before we dive into what I think they're doing, what's going on, their struggles, and how they need to recover, some tips as well, given what I think makes sense. If you are someone that likes videos like this, a bit more speculative, and hopefully people from the Marriott team actually watch it and read the comments, give this a thumbs up, that way I know and also that way it goes up on the YouTube algorithm and stuff like that. For me, I think the gift card is a sign that they are losing customers and they're seeing it in the data. There's no reason that a company is doing well would give gift cards like this because it doesn't make sense. When you think of luxury brands, when you think of other companies, airlines and stuff, you don't see them randomly sending out gift cards most of the time unless there is some drama going on, unless their financials are low and they need to improve it, or if they did something wrong, I guess, that would also contribute to it. My guess is that's based off their Q1 and Q2, they're seeing a decrease in reservations in their system relative to the past years. And they do have a lot of information. They're the largest hotel chain in terms of branding, in terms of number of hotels in the world. So they know what's going on. They see loyalists or people who they think might be loyalists, since a lot of us have status, not booking as much relative to before, and they're trying to fix stats. To me, the big problem though is more systemic. So a $50 gift card, that's nice. Maybe that forces you to do one more stay. But if you're someone who intentionally moved away from Marriott, you're probably not going to change your behavior based off $50. Yes, you might use it for an upcoming trip to Bora Bora, or you might use it for one stay at a random place that might be an $80 hotel, but I don't think you're going to change all of your upcoming stays that you move towards Hyatt or Hilton or wherever else to them for this. Outside of this though, we have also seen a lot of promotions that they've done. I'll put a few up on the screen, but if you look at these, it just doesn't seem normal. Especially since some of these are very aggressive in terms of the number of award nights you get to help people or to kind of, I guess, dangle a stick in front of them so that they go towards status. So hey, we know that status is hard to reach now, but we're trying to make it a bit easier for you. Off the top of my head, there's three big things they can address that I think could convert some people or at least make me or a lot of you guys probably happier. The first one is the divergence in the benefits you get based off the brands you go to. Pretty much every time you book a stay, you need to look into a spreadsheet, into this chart to figure out what benefits you get if you're a platinum member because every property, it's going to be different. Maybe if they did it by buckets, if they had like level one type stuff, level two type stuff, and then the Ritz Carlton and St. Regis, it would be a bit simpler, but it's, it's just a mess. It doesn't make sense. And I think even for people like me who likes to look at stuff like this, it's too confusing for what it is. On kind of a related note, there's a lot of properties who still opt out of giving these benefits. So I think for them, it would be good to make sure that hotels that have these status type things all align and make sure that they all actually give the benefits. Number two is making gold a bit more valuable. So I realize that a lot of consultants really don't like the fact that you can just apply for a credit card and get gold and get a lot of benefits while they might be staying those 50 nights to do it. For me, if you look at a program like Hilton and some other programs like IHG, they still provide value for people who are getting gold status through a credit card. So maybe it does devalue the brand in certain situations, but it's just one of the things where if it's not good enough, then I think a lot of people who aren't the consultant types are going to avoid certain chains because of that. 
Gold right now is pretty much the same as what silver was before. So maybe they make it something in between of what gold is right now versus what platinum is right now. Some aspects of it, not all of it. But I feel like there just needs to be something. The third one is making status a bit easier to hit. Again, consultants aren't going to be happy with this one. I think that's fine. But I feel like a lot of people, even people who travel quite a bit, still feel that these requirements are pretty heavy. A lot of it is due to the fact that even if you have multiple cards, the 15 knights that you get towards status don't stack. And there's not really that many ways to get status now due to spend. In the past, if you had the Ritz Carlton card, that $10,000 got you Maria Gold status. Right now, in order to get similar benefits, you're going to need to hit Platinum, which is $75,000, and spend on either the Ritz Carlton card or the American Express Brilliant card. I get that they're trying to address this based off the promotions that are running to get more status and stuff based off the nights that you are staying. And it does make sense because they want you to do stays in order to get more nights. But still, I feel like for a lot of people, you don't really want to invest in the system if you don't really know what the future holds. The other part of it too is that when you run a lot of promotions, it ends up devaluing the brand a bit. So I notice this with Hilton a lot. They have a lot of promotions. I like Hilton, I like Conrad's quite a bit, but the more promotions you have, sometimes when I do think of Hilton, I think of it as a bit lower down. For me personally, I pretty much stay at the place that makes the most sense. I lean more towards Hilton now due to that diamond status, but it just depends on the location and it depends on what I'm trying to do. If I'm going to a hotel at a specific place and I'm trying to review it, then I oftentimes don't have a choice because you're stuck with those options. If I'm going somewhere expensive, pretty much resorty places, and I'm looking to use points, I'm going to use the points that I have, whether that's Marriott, Hilton, IHG, Hyatt, whatever points make sense in that situation. I think a lot of people get caught up in their feelings whenever they look at changes and things happening, benefits being removed, benefits being added. For me, it's thinking of it as a rational, logical person and consumer. So if something happens, fine, maybe you move your stays towards another property. If they change it, then I'll go back or I'll do what makes the most sense for me. Kind of a weird video, kind of a deal video due to the $50, but also just to get your perspective on what you think about all of this. A bit of me knows that people from different airlines and banks and stuff and hotel chains probably watch some of these videos just because of how big the company is. It's not unreasonable to have one person reading comments. So if you do have any suggestions for them, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and thumbs up the ones that you feel make the most sense if it has been recommended, just because maybe they will read this and make certain changes for 2020 and onwards based off these suggestions. I think of all the hotel chains, my favorite right now is still Conrad and then right afterwards and pretty closely is JW Marriott just because it has the same vibe each time you go and it has a decor that I really like. Hopefully that was helpful and my question for you guys is what are your suggestions for them? What do you think they can change to make the program a bit better, more competitive? Let me and the community and hopefully Marriott know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share the video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.